Hey everybody, welcome to Don't Copy That Floppy. I'm your host Lex. And I'm your other host Dan. And we are a weekly video game news podcast broadcasting uh, Fridays at 7pm on www.chipbit.net. Fridays most of the time. Most of the time. As you can, as you can tell. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> um, sometimes Saturdays when, when things are going on. But um, yeah, you, know, you can find us on all sorts of social media. Um, I mean, as well as right here on Chipbit Radio, obviously. But you can also find us on Facebook. On Twitter, on YouTube, on iTunes, and on Steam. Um, we have a show archive on iTunes and on the chipit.net um, website uh, where you can go listen to old episodes and everything because, like I said, we broadcast live. We're, we're talking right now. We're doing it. Unless you're listening to this in the archive and then we're not. <laughs> Is it getting confusing enough? Yet? <laughs> um, Right now, I'm being taken in by this gorgeous Transformers Devastation gameplay trailer. Oh my god, which Lex, true po- beauty. which Lex posted to our Facebook page. If you want to look at it, oh man, I want to play this game so bad. It looks great. It's Platinum Games developing a old school, like, Generation 1 style Transformers action game. And man, does it look great. It looks so cool. Um,. But it's, we've got we've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. We sure do. We got a Kickstarter, fun Kickstarter. We have a fun Kickstarter? Yeah. Did you send me the fun Kickstarter? It's posted to Facebook. How do you not pay attention to Facebook then? I forgot to check the Facebook for articles, clearly. <laughs> so so we got, sue me. <laughs> so we got a fun we got a fun Kickstarter article. Uh we got a little bit of pokey drama. We got um <laughs> We got some really interesting um, statistics published from people who are buying stuff from Steam and sort of gamer demographics. Yes, indeed. Uh, we got info about uh, Assassin's Creed movie. We got uh, info sure. about another video game movie that I found, too. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, those together. We got info about how you, too, can win an island. You, too, can win one. We have another piece of info about Wizard Squad, and there's only one specific reason. We've talked about Wizard Squad a lot, these mm-hmm. hacker groups. There's a very specific reason I wanted to bring up this article, um, so we'll get to that when we get to that. Okay. Um, we have a disgrunt- disgruntled free-to-play game manager who was arrested. A little story about that. Oh. We have very exciting amiibo news. Never thought you'd hear me say that, did you? Uh. Um, we have a little bit of stuff by Mighty Number no. 9 and some other games that are coming out. Um, I am going to touch upon Twitch Plays Dark Souls. Which says started up, and I said I would do like a weekly. Oh, we're gonna do the weekly that, thing. I forgot um, about that. I'm glad you did. Actually, really interesting stuff to talk about with that. Oh, cool. Much more so than I expected. Very nice. Yes. Um, and then we'll end it with a little look at what games are coming out in the next week or two or so. Actually, some good stuff this time. It's been a while wow. since we've had anything worth mentioning. That's because it's just about September. Just about September. There's some stuff coming out. Uh, give me some soundboard, and then let's get into Kickstarter. Soundboard! Ah! Let's do it. <laughs> um, Kickstarter, take us into this one. Oh my gosh, did you... Uh, we reported on this actually a while back. Uh, Divinity Original Sin, which yes. was a game that was Kickstarted, yes. uh, came out on Steam, was amazing. I bought it, played it. It's Oh my god, it's so good. Uh, they are doing a Kickstarter for a sequel to it. Yes. Um, and within the first day of the Kickstarter being up, they made their $500,000 goal. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, that because this started at um, a 33-day mark, even though I, oh. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, that's but apparently odd. you can. Um, three, so three or thirty-four. It's been two days, and they've almost made double their goal. Yeah, they're at right now. They're sitting at uh, nine hundred seventy-one thousand. Yep. Oh, there's the stretch goals. They hadn't when I first looked at it. They hadn't put up the stretch goals yet. <laughs> they got strategist mode for diehards. I guess pick a skill tree as eight hundred fifty thousand racial skills at one million. You can play an undead. Undead Origins. 1.2, that's interesting. Death is only the beginning. 1.35 million, you get another skill tree. Okay. Sure. Why not? And the Hall of Echoes at 1.5 million, which is very cryptic. Yeah, that doesn't really tell us anything. But it's probably me. (laughs) So this game, I mean, I would highly recommend that you check out... I still have not played... The first one, oh, actually, first one. but so I've heard good. a lot of really good stuff about. Uh, it. And the second one's going to be even better because when I <laughs> so when I watch the and I encourage you to watch the video on the, this game's Kickstarter because they I actually, assure you that Lex is not holding a big bag of money right now as he says this. 
You like the game. first game, the second one will be even better. <laughs> Synergy. Synergy. <laughs> Prosumers. Next generation experience. VR integration. <laughs> But seriously, this doesn't have any VR integration. No. It looks super pretty, though. Yeah, wow. Because the first game looked really pretty. It didn't come out that long ago, so you, yeah. you would expect it to look yeah. pretty. Uh, like, this really game nice looks... 3D isometric yeah. graphics. Um, so for those who don't know, uh, this is like Baldur's Gate, basically. Yeah. It's uh, it's a little different in that the, the mechanics of combat are actually full-on turn-based instead of sort of, sort of real-time where you pause it yeah. and decide what you do. With this, yeah, yeah it's full turn-based. Uh, That's fine. I like turn-based for games like this. Yeah, I um, think it's, it's a it's a better way to do it. <laughs> and it's um, and like we were saying, it's very pretty. Uh, yes. But yeah, so watch the video. They go into the stuff they're doing with it, and the reason why they're kickstarting it. So one mm-hmm. of my first concerns about this was I saw it, and I'm like, wait, you made a ton of money off your first Kickstarter, and why your game you sold too? really well. Why do you need to kickstart again? Uh, because they just want to add like, a whole bucket of additional stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like... this. So it's a bigger step up than just putting out... A sequel. A, like, a, a, a bare-bone sequel. Yeah. Like, they want to do a level. So not only will it have all the stuff the original one had, which included things like a level editor and online co-op oh, excellent. for two players, the, this one's going to have co-op for four players. Amazing. It's going to have... <laughs> I think it's going to have controller support, because I'm pretty sure in the video they show oh, them right. playing it with that. Um, but also, it has this whole quest system where when you play co-op, you don't necessarily have to be on the same team or work together. Oh, that's awesome. So and That's, the, di- that's different. <laughs> yeah, so the way you do quests, like, you go into a town, they, the example they gave is you go into a town, and the, this town, like, hates dwarves. Right. And they have, like, a little, like, refugee camp of dwarves off to the side. Right. And everybody in the group is, like, a human or an elf, except for one of the characters who's a dwarf. And each character is being controlled by a human player. Right. So they're going through their plan, and, like, the dwarf can't get into town. So he's like, okay, well, I'm going to find a different way into town. So he does a whole little side quest where he goes through the sewers (laughs) to get into town. That's really cool. And then the other players, because they're jerks, decide... To rat the dwarf character out to the town <laughs> guard anyway and get him arrested. That's cool. And if the game's full of stuff like that, it'll be really, really neat. Yeah, it sounds that's, like so much great. fun to play with people. Yeah. Um, Good for you, Larian Studios LLC. Yeah, man, <laughs> I am so excited. This game's gonna be great. You know what might not be great? Assassin's Creed. Movie. Oh no! I mean, we don't really know. But here's, there's pictures of Michael Fassbender as the Assassin's Creed. The Assassin's Creed. <laughs> there he is. With his wrist blades and all that business that you'd expect. Mm-hmm. So I guess the movie is about a guy, he was made for the film, this character. He's a descendant of the Assassins from his ancestor in 15th century Spain. And then he goes and learns stuff as that, and goes and fights the Knights Templar in the present day. Um, so, I, I guess that actually makes me wonder how it's much its of own... this is going to take place in the present day, and how much is it going to be history? Yeah! Because in the games, it's all history. Yeah, there's like little snippets in modern day, but they say it's like, so he's going to fight him in the real world. Unless they're already planning on doing a sequel and having that be the sequel. Uh, or they a trilogy. Are plan- they're already planning to do a trilogy. Definitely planning that. Yeah. And they're going to put out one movie a year because it's Assassin's Creed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so Fassbender is a great actor. He's good. I like him. Um, if He's this- the best part of Prometheus. It's true. By a long shot. By, yeah. <laughs> By like um, a huge long shot. This image doesn't look real to me. Like, it looks weirdly digital. I don't yeah. know why. It's the lighting. I think it is the lighting. The lighting makes it look like it's been made in, like, the Unreal Engine or something. Yeah, so it doesn't even seem like a screenshot, and that weirds me out. Yeah. But, um, but assuming it's real, uh, I mean, the costume looks really good. It looks fine, yeah. He looks good in the costume. Yeah. I'm sure that he could, yeah, I'm sure he could handle the role. My, my doubt comes with, you know, the screenwriter, the director, everything else about the movie. The corporate backing. Yeah. Yeah. It's yep. kind of, like... Oh, can and, I also point out that this... the legacy of licensed video game movies... I don't know if you... Oh, yeah, yeah. ...is a problem. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hill that you gotta overcome. Yeah. Uh, did you point out that this was a Yahoo exclusive? I did not. 
This was a Yahoo exclusive. It probably is why it says Yahoo on the picture, I guess, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, August 27th, the Yahoo. I was like, wow, Yahoo's relevant enough to get exclusives. I guess Still, so. Good for them. They had to fight for this one. Yeah. They did it. It would be really great if it was revealed that this is a fake, like, digital image. And then it's like, oh, Yahoo, you couldn't even get this thing right. Oh, that's sad. That would be so sad. That's too sad. I don't like that. <laughs> so, meanwhile, Lionsgate has been has become set to produce a Borderlands movie. Oh, I did hear about this. I totally oh, did forgot you? about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, apparently, I, one thing I want to bring up about this is they're talking about how um, the franchise, barring the pre-sequel, um, has been big critical and or commercial successes. Mm -hmm. It's all been good. This brings up an interesting fact that we've talked about Tales from the Borderlands before kind of in passing when we see that another episode of it has come out. Yeah. Um, neither of us have played it. Neither of us has, like, heard anything about it. Not other than it getting pretty decent review scores. Yeah. I have heard, I looked into it a little bit, that game is way more well-liked than, like, any of the other stuff Telltale's put out. Oh, really? Since, like, The Wolf Among Us. Like, That's all of their other stuff. Apparently it's quite good. Okay. So, Cool. I mean, because I saw people talking about this movie and saying, like, I wonder if it'll be as good as Tales from the Borderlands. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I looked it up and like, yeah, like Tales from the Borderlands, pretty good. All right. <laughs> you learn something new every day. The game from them that nobody freaking talks about is better, way better than the Game of Thrones one. Apparently. It's a sleeper hit. Thing. Sleeper hit. Good for them. But uh, uh, but yeah, I I assume this movie is happening because Mad Max was extremely commercially successful. They want to do a, is, a wacky wasteland adventure. Yeah, it'll be like Mad Max except silly, silly. Yeah, which is actually a recipe for disaster. That actually sounds terrible. Yeah, I don't know how that'll go. But uh, Mad Max hinges pretty hard on being not silly. <laughs> But on the other hand, with the Borderlands games, one of the things that I have always talked about that I really like about them is the writing is just really, really funny. Yes. So let's assume, I mean, what's probably not going to happen, but if it happened, if they got the same writers that wrote Borderlands, Borderlands 2 yeah. writing the film script. The producers are the same people that they've had behind superhero movies like Iron Man. Okay. So, like, that's something. That's something. I guess they've done that kind of thing before. Lionsgate. Who they plug the Hunger Games and Divergent. I mean, Lionsgate makes a ton of stuff. Yeah, they just make everything. So, <laughs> will it star the Vault Hunters we already know and love, or introduce a new set of characters? And followed by the better question: Will it actually be good? No, probably not. <laughs> That's the answer. To I have no. more faith in the Assassin's Creed movie than I do in this movie. I'm going to say that. You know, yeah, because the Assassin's Creed movie could just get away with being a fun action the movie. The Assassin's Creed movie is way harder to screw up. Yeah, as long this as they movie have is, stunts. This movie is easy to mess up. It is. It totally is. Like, that's that's all there is to it. Because <laughs> it could have decent action sequences, but if it doesn't get the tone right, it's going to be unbearable to watch. Oh, yeah. And if the acting's just, like, subpar, mm -hmm. or the direction is just not right, gotta get those jokes to hit. You gotta. It's gotta important. Those jokes to hit. Um, speaking of, did you want to save hitting, this till later in the show? Oh yeah, it's like it? a big discussion. Yeah, I suppose that's true. We should, we should save it till later. I'll pull it back yeah. over here. Who's who out there has ever wanted to own their own island? This guy. I don't know if I've ever wanted to own my own island. I mean, I guess if somebody offered, I'd say yes. Of course you would, but <laughs> it never really came up. Um, well, you can maybe if you participate in Just Cause Three's. Um, like, launch competition, I guess? Um, you need to pre-order the game, get a special code, and you will be using, uh, once, I guess it's once the game comes out, you use all the tools available to you in the game to create, a, like, a big inventive chaos like, event, yeah, and you get points for doing this. I feel like maybe maybe it's just by creating chaos you get more points. So the more you play and do that stuff, the more points you get. But once you they score up all these points and whoever wins is being given an island as the prize. Yeah. An island valued at fifty thousand dollars US. US. I don't know how much islands go for, generally. Probably more than that. Probably more than that. The island's location is to be determined by the competition sponsor. 
It is not guaranteed to be... This says inhabitable. I'm assuming they meant habitable. Yeah. Developed. Developed. Could... Would they give you an island with people on there? <laughs> <laughs> That's what that means. <laughs> that would be really funny. Oh my god, there's like five people who live on this island. You just want their, I'm your owner now. <laughs> You're my citizens. Yeah. <laughs> um, people of Tiny Island. <laughs> or reachable by any means other than a boat. I mean, I'd assume most of them would be reachable by boat pretty exclusively anyway. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's not guaranteed to be big enough for you to land a helicopter on it, maybe? It's not developed, so you pro- there's no ferry, I guess. There's no ferry. <laughs> but a ferry's a boat. That's true. I don't know. There's uh, no underwater tunnels. No. But I'm assuming this island is just going to be like a rock in the middle of the ocean. Oh, somewhere. totally. I like how they don't... With maybe a tiny beach and like some armadillos or something weird. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be worth it. It'd be totally That's worth it. fine. Uh, no, I like how the... Um... Uh, they don't want to say where in the world the island is. Yeah. So I was like, oh, so it could be, like, off the coast of Norway. Yeah, this frozen nothing. Yeah, that would be horrible. <laughs> um, I guess the assumption is it's somewhere in the tropics. And uh, one thing that I give them I mean, if is... if it was in the tropics, it would fit the tone of the game. Yeah, and one thing I will give them is, like, the, uh, those islands in the tropics, depending on what country you're talking about, they could go for fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, they might be ex- in extremely dangerous areas if they yeah. go for fifty thousand. With like high seas drug traffickers routinely passing by them, as dangerous perhaps as Just Cause. Maybe that was the plan all along. The plan. Um, winners may opt to receive a cash prize instead. And the cash prize could, I assume, be up to fifty thousand dollars, which is like I'm assuming that's what that means. I, I think people would rather just get that. Yeah. Unfortunately. I feel like they shouldn't allow that. Maybe they should just be like, no, you're getting the island. I, I It's really, more interesting. I want them to talk. I want to see the island. I want Because I want I a reason to want this island. I really want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> like, how big are we talking? I, Does it have some trees? You know what I animals on it? You know what I don't want what? is them to pull a mall on you and be like, you want the island. We're never going to get back to you about that. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Let us go find it. Yep. Um, so that's neat, though. I guess. Like, it, it, I, w- I want to see the island. <laughs> I want to see the The first island. comment says his house is worth more than the island, and that he could sell his house and buy at least five islands of that value. You know, well, one, good for you, Elvik. <laughs> one of the things I will say, and that's not necessarily untrue depending on where you're living, like, yeah. I would totally do that. Right? Like, what? if I had a house... That Wait, sell a- your house and buy a bunch of islands? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I would do that in a heartbeat! <laughs> you gotta make sure they're good islands, though. What if they're crappy? It's still worth it. It's still worth it just to have them. <laughs> just like have Jurassic some- Park. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Let's talk about police activity. Oh, okay. I have three articles involving police activity wow. this week. Okay, well, let's start off with one that's sort of the least video game related, because this is actually card game related, but when I first saw it, I assumed they were talking about... I mean, but it's a card game based on a video game. Yeah, so it kind of works. Yeah. Um, all right, so as we... Oh, what an unfortunate last name this man has. Yeah, so as we found out, and this was national news, so you've probably heard about it, um, on... Oh, gosh, when did the story break? The 23rd. Yeah. August this 23rd. This Polygon article is from the 25th, but it's like a follow-up article yeah. that I have here. Um, I have an article from Boston.com. Okay. Uh, and this is, uh, Two men arrested on firearms charges after threats to Pokemon event. Yep. You heard it right. They don't want nobody playing Pokemon. So World Championships? We don't think so. So this is uh, two men, 18-year-old Kevin Norton. And unfortunately named 27-year-old James Stumbo. Stumbo. Oh, no. I'm going to bring up a side real quick. There was a recent thing in the U.S. Uh, in New York where two convicts escaped from a prison. And one of the convicts, was his last name was Sweat. Really? Yeah. I didn't and, catch that. And I was, every time I heard his name, I was just like, Ugh, what an unfortunate name. No wonder he turned to crime. No <laughs> wonder he turned, yeah. Like, and Stumbo. He turned to crime because everyone made fun of his last name. Oh, they, yeah. That's... Change your name, man. You can do that. Also, I assume that Stumbo is the neckbeard in the picture. Yes, he's left. 
Okay. Damn, Stumbo left. Mm-hmm. He looks like a Stumbo. Oh, he does. That's so unfortunate. I don't feel bad saying about these things about them. Because they were going to murder a bunch people. of children? <laughs> yeah, no. They, so these guys, basically, they got um, one gun each, uh, no. an AR-15 and a, what, 12-gauge shotgun? Yep. Uh, th- they're from Iowa, right? I yep. believe. Yeah, they're from Iowa. They got these guns there because... And nothing, those, what, nothing they do in Iowa besides hate Pokemon. Yeah. That, for those who don't know, maybe some of our international listeners, uh, the U.S. Has, well, as you probably know, the U.S. has 50 states. Um, but uh, <laughs> laws specifically regarding uh, gun purchasing and ownership are very different in different states. So in yeah. Iowa, it's probably, I believe, it's pretty easy to get your hands on uh, firearms. I'm whereas... pretty sure in Iowa you can just go outside and, like, dig a hole and you'll probably find a gun. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, a magnum. Oh, hey. Uh, whereas in Massachusetts, we have pretty strict gun laws. Yes. Uh, so the event, the Pokemon event, was in Boston, in Massachusetts. These guys were coming there. They posted a bunch of uh, pictures to, so- to social media of their firearms Specifically on top of their car, and yep. then talked about how they were going. They were heading to uh, t- to the Pokemon tournament to uh, uh, to start Columbine Part Two. Yes, they specifically referred to Columbine, Columbine Part Two, which once again for any international listeners, Columbine was a school shooting years ago. Yep, everyone blamed Marilyn Manson, and then Marilyn Manson said, "That's stupid. You're all stupid." Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and he was right. He was right. <laughs> I mean, he's a weird dude, but he was right about that. He was right about that. Uh, right. So, um, so yeah, these guys posted this stuff to social media. Because they're genius criminals. Yes. And then uh, the event security found out about it. They were notified. Shocking. And uh, they they were like, oh, hey, you know, um, the uh, police, you should probably look into these two people. So police stopped them. Uh, yeah. And they did. they did everything. Totally the right way. They they detained the people for the uh, amount of time that they could detain them, yes. and they were like, "We're gonna get a search warrant for your vehicle." So they went to a judge, presented the evidence, got the search warrant, went back, Come impounded the, the vehicle, yeah. found all the guns, impounded all of them, yeah. and then arrested these guys formally. Good for them. Yeah, they did it right. Every the law, you know, the the yeah the the um, law enforcement took all the necessary steps, knew what was going on. And totally prevented what could have been pretty terrible. Yeah. Um, now, why they were doing this, I believe, was as simple as um, they were on some sort of uh, forum about the Pokemon Stumbo's tournament. Pokemon card. His Charizard. His shiny Charizard card was stolen when he was in school. <gasps> he always wanted revenge. Oh. Card was worth $100. $100. $100. No, but I think that uh, the they were on like a forum. Uh-huh. And um, I didn't see anything about like why they were going to do this. I think it's somewhere in this article, but I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure, and I'm not 100%, is that uh, they were on a forum and they it was talking about the tournament. Right. And a moderator got into, like, the, the these two guys got into an argument with one of the, the moderators. Right. And the moderator kicked them from the forum because the guy was just like, you guys suck. And you, yeah. you can't be on here. And they responded by just being like, okay, we'll see you when we get there and then we'll shoot you to death. <laughs> or, like, something similar to that. Okay. And the moderator probably at first thought, like, oh, people on the internet being jerks. Yep. But then he probably noticed them posting those pictures to social media of their guns. Yeah. Talking about how they were going to Boston for Columbine Park And I mean, Park he probably two. noticed the guy's name, last name was Stumbo and was like, oh, that's a criminal in the making. True. Yes. Definitely. Remember, everybody, discriminate against people with weird last names. Because <laughs> they're probably criminals. <laughs> do not actually do that, please. Uh... <laughs> So, yeah, these guys, um, we're still going to have to wait to see... Um, what, where it goes from here. Yeah, like ha- what kind of uh, sentencing they're going to get. Um, but hopefully they're going to go to jail, because this is like uh, something they should totally go to jail for. Yes, it is. Uh, Meanwhile, in Britain... In Britain? Cops arrest six in connection with the Lizard Squad Christmas attacks on Xbox and PlayStation Network. Excellent. Good job, UK. Cops holding, just doing the right it thing. Down. Yeah. Um, the reason I wanted to talk about this article, um, because as soon as I saw it, I clicked it to check one very specific thing, and that was what were the ages of these six people who were arrested. Oh. 
Can I guess? Go for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess but I'm gonna guess like thirteen to fifteen. Okay. Because I uh, we 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 talked about this before. Every time we talk about Lizard Squad, yep. that people are acting like these guys are like veteran cyber terrorist master hacker people, mm-hmm. and everyone who's been arrested so far has been like sixteen or seventeen. These six guys age; their ages were all between fifteen and eighteen. So once again, the pattern is followed that these aren't like crazy hacker super hackers. They're teenagers. Who are just huge jerks. Who are just jerks, and are just screwing around because they're anonymous on the internet. So, there you go. Like, <laughs> the, the, it keeps proving itself over and over and over again, which to me says that a big problem here is, like, parents not paying attention to what these kids are doing, or understanding what these kids are doing. And also, I, I, I don't really know what the best way to stop this kind of thing from happening is. But I feel like the fact that it's all, like, kids, basically, should make it easier. I would would really like there to be some more stuff in schools talking about things like this. Yeah, Um, because it's clearly a thing. Yeah, and also, I just, this, I think it's partly, like, this culture of kids that have grown up on the internet. With the anonymity. With the anonymity of it. Of it. Because, um, you know, like, the internet was a thing back in 2000 and the yes. late 90s. And these kids, were, these guys were born then. Yep. Like, the oldest people who were arrested this time were born in 1997. That's crazy. Right? That blows my mind. They literally grew up on the internet. Like, you and me are just old enough that we, like, didn't. Well, we experienced a really? dial-up. Yeah, which isn't really the internet. Not really, no. <laughs> that was just an exercise in miserable patience. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think it, it, people aren't thinking about how different social culture is for these kids who are growing up with access to all of the information in the world <laughs> and this like ability to just keep themselves completely anonymous and say whatever they want and do whatever they want. I mean, I guess not completely, because obviously some of them have been caught. Well, yeah. But it's much harder, it's much different than them walking into, like, a convenience store and stealing something, Mm. or, or, like, holding the place up or something. It's a different kind of crime. Or it's different from them going to someone's house and harassing them at their house. And and they don't, and and they definitely don't understand, like, one of their things, uh... Chaos is entertainment. Chaos is entertainment is one of their quotes they like to throw around. That's so edgy. So edgy. the reason I knew they were all teenagers is because no self respecting adult would say that. <laughs> These kids probably all shop at Hot Topic or whatever the British no, version of Hot they, Topic is. I think I think they have Hot Topic in England. I assume so. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, England, that you have to have Hot Topics there. I apologize for America. Um, <laughs> Take it upon yourself. But uh, yeah, man, just it's a bummer. And and yeah, I think parents just need to understand what their kids are doing online. Well, a lot of parents didn't grow up with the internet either. So, yeah, you wouldn't um, expect them to understand. Like, if they're yeah, having like, kids when they're 27, or when the when it's 1997, sorry, yeah. then they're probably having kids when they're in their late 20s or 30s, which yeah. means they definitely didn't grow up with the internet. And I think that also they... I think a lot of people, even younger people, a lot of people don't really understand just how much stuff you can get at on the internet. Yeah. If you know how to do it. Um, I think especially parents don't really understand the amount of things you can access. Like, most parents think, obviously, like, oh, I don't want my kids to find porn when they're little kids. It's, it'll corrupt them or whatever. Which, thing. which is one of the least dangerous things it's on the internet. probably one of the least dangerous things you're going to find on the internet. <laughs> like, and there's a lot of it. So, yes, they're going to find porn. Oh, no. Oh, no. But, like, uh, there's other things you should be worrying about, like your kid not becoming a criminal. (laughs) Um, Meanwhile, the FBI arrested the disgruntled former manager of Game of War Fire Age. What is that? was accused... I've seen commercials for this game. (laughs) was accused of stealing trade secrets. So this guy, Jing Zheng... It's a Chinese name. Oh, no. Chinese free-to-play games. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, uh, was a developer, 
was a employee at um, Game of War Fire Age developer Machine Zone. For anyone who doesn't know, Game of War Fire Age is in this article from Polygon from the 26th quotes. I quote from it. I, I don't know how to say that. I'm quoting the article. <laughs> um, a lucrative, free-to-play strategy game available on Android and iOS. Best known for its ubiquitous advertising campaigns that include MMA fighter Conor McGregor and Kate Upton. This is the Kate Upton game. Oh, yeah, I've seen Where she has her boob armor. Yeah. And she's like, look at my boob armor. Buy this free-to-play game. You're a whale now. <laughs> Enjoy it. Um, yeah, the Super Bowl ad with Kate Upton has 10 million views on YouTube. Oh, I shouldn't say what I was just about to say. We have British listeners. <laughs> it would be offensive. <laughs> Potentially. Um, or I guess it makes me look stupid more. For real, every time someone was mentioning Kate Upton, I thought they were talking about, like, the Kate who married the prince. The royal wedding. Yeah, I don't know why you thought that. I don't either. It's probably because I didn't follow, like, any of anything. I had no <laughs> idea who Kate Upton you, was. You have no idea who either of those people are. I did not know at all who either of those people were, so I heard the word Kate. And it was famous, so I was like, is it what? Famous pretty lady named Kate must be the same person. Must be the same person. <laughs> um, why is British royalty endorsing this free-to-play game? That's why it was weird, right? <laughs> I guess this more makes me look stupid than it's <laughs> offensive to anyone in the UK. Um, so yeah, um, this guy apparently heard that his job was in jeopardy. So he copied, he allegedly copied more than a hundred files to a company laptop, transferred them to external storage, wiped the laptop, and re returned to the company. And he was arrested before he could get on to a plane with all these developer secrets. Whoa. This is like some movie stuff right here. If he's convicted, he faces a maximum of 10 years in prison and a fine of $250,000. I guess he's their new whale. <laughs> Do you know? Do, have you forgotten what whale means? <laughs> means they spend, they give you a lot of money. Oh, okay. For your game. I get it then. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a joke. <laughs> I thought it made sense. It kind of makes sense. <laughs> Just give me this. We do need to use the term whale more often, though. We should. We found out about it what last week, week before. Yeah, I'd heard about it before that, but never like in real specific terms. Amazing. Yeah. What a what a scummy thing to say about a human being. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way to go, corporate. Um, so, yes. Uh, do, 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 that also happened. You want to talk about Amiibo? No, station identification. Hey, Hit are you confused that. because you, this isn't chiptune music? I um, am. I would be, too. <laughs> this is actually... Uh, don't copy that from Floppy. A video gonna, game I'm news gonna podcast. This, I'm click this button. <laughs> Celebrate. <laughs> um, we uh, broadcast on uh, Fridays at 7 p.m. on chipit.net, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can find us on all sorts of social media, such as uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Steam, and iTunes. Uh, we have a show archive up on iTunes, as well as Chipit website. Bleh. And uh, you should definitely check us out on there. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get back into our stories. Yeah. Um, we haven't talked about Amiibo in a while. No, we haven't. We haven't. Um, we talked about them a bit when they were first coming out, and there was all this trouble getting them in stock, and GameStop was being creepy and holding back all the Shulk Amiibos so they could resell them at a higher price and all this other Ugh. scumbag tactics, basically. Um, but, um, there's some recent cool news regarding Amiibo. Um, coming on the heels of... The Shovel Knight announcement that the first expansion pack is finished that allows you to play as one of the game's bosses, Plague Knight, through the entire game, and has totally reworked levels nice. and powers and everything. Looks really cool, and it's free, and I'm excited. Um, coming on the heels of that, uh, Yacht Club Games has announced a Shovel Knight amiibo is being made. Cool. Super cool. So, yeah, then they and Nintendo partnered up again to, to make this Shovel Knight amiibo. He looks great. He looks like Shovel Knight. Yeah. Um, there's no release date for him yet. Um, the update to Shovel Knight comes next month, or in October, I believe. Maybe it is next month. It's soon. And then in October, there's going to be a physical release of the game, because um, it's been doing so well for them. Um, this Shovel Knight amiibo, amiibo will be unlocking a co-op mode on the Wii U version of the game, Whoa. where you can play through the whole game with another person. 
And on the 3DS and Wii U versions, it will unlock a bunch of new customization options and abilities. So not only is this the first indie game to get an official Nintendo Amiibo, um, it is also... Sounds like it's one of the best bang for your buck amiibos you can get. Totally. Because that stuff it's giving you is really cool. So, so Yacht Club Games can do no wrong. Apparently <laughs> they, so. They're extremely smart in how they've been marketing yeah. this game. Well, and not to mention, you buy, you buy this game for 15 bucks, and now this coming month we're getting a, a reason to play through the whole game again, and it's going to be totally different. Yeah. That's great. That's great. And they have two more planned boss modes, too, for two of the other boss knights that are on the way. Um, so this like is nailing it over here. So it's a plug. super smart move on Yacht Club's part. It's also a super smart move on Nintendo's part. Yes, and I do have another article of where Nintendo talks about how they want to do this more. Yeah, now to really push that indie game market that they want to get you know in on. Because like we've always said, they need to. Ooh, oh, your oh. headphones just started working. Oh, it started working. I guess the jack was messed up or something. Oh wow. Uh, so that as we've said in the past. Uh, Nintendo needs to tap into that third-party market. Yes. And they finally... Found their way to do it. Finally. (laughs) And I mean, making Amiibo for third-party games and indie games is a fantastic idea in general. I really hope they continue to do this with other stuff. And if with their next console, they just make a big push for this. Yeah. Especially since, as we discussed, with their next console, should be able to run the latest version of Unreal Engine. So there's more chance that there will be a lot more better third-party games on Because a lot of people are going to be developing on Unreal. Yeah. So with that as a possibility, that's good. Um, Shovel Knight Amiibo, awesome. I want it. I absolutely need it. Shovel Knight for Super Smash Brothers. Oh my god, yes. (laughs) A bunch of people are talking about that now that they've seen this, and that they're doing these DLC characters for Smash. That would be great. What a good addition that would be. That would be so good. I love Shovel Knight. (laughs) He's so likable. <laughs> so short. <laughs> so short. Um, so yes, uh, they're also bringing um, Kerbal Space Program to the Wii U. Oh. That weird indie game about your weird little aliens and you gotta build them a goofy rocket ship. People love it. People love it. Um, so I have this very big article that I'm just kind of going to summarize that is... Um, Nintendo wants to push these indie games. They're going to be acquiring other existing indie IPs as fast as they can. They're going to be trying to support them a lot as far as Wii U, support on the Wii U and the 3DS goes. Obviously, we're getting this Amiibo. We'll probably see Amiibo for other successful indie games, that means, uh, which is really cool. And it's nice to see Amiibo for something that's not Nintendo first party. Um, Not to mention, it's nice to see them continue to put out Amiibo. It's, yeah. They're not just dropping them. They're not yeah. just dropping like, them. Which is good. Well, I mean, know. We, we know that they were very successful in terms of sales, but I'm still sort of skeptical as to how much the, of that sales success was like yeah. manufactured by Nintendo by right. creating all the demand. Right. And I mean, I my worries came initially because they were so integrated with Super Smash Brothers specifically. Yeah. That um, I was concerned that once that kind of blew over, they would stop bothering. But they they keep adding support for them to all these other games they're putting out. So, hopefully that that will continue. Cool. Because if they want these to be a thing, that's that's what they gotta do. And we know they're working with uh, Skylanders. Yes, we know that from as well. E3. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we'll see where it goes from here, especially with their new console on the way. Uh, meanwhile, oh, I'm yawning. Um, because we're talking about Mighty Number no. Nine. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. that was cold. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a little mean. Um, but Mighty Number no. Nine is getting a demo version released um, on as September fifteenth. As an on apology PC. for the delay. As an apology for its delay to next year. It's going to include four levels, one of which has not been playable at any like event demos before, and six challenge mode stages. Um, the previously shown stages were, are going to have new enemy placements and a visual upgrade to bring it up to, like, the release version's graphics, I'm assuming. Um, they're also including all the relevant cutscenes for these levels, because as this article on Destructoid um, from yesterday states, the single player is basically done. 
Which explains why we have to wait till next year to get it. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, it even includes voice and subtitle options, dialogue boxes that can be toggled, an 8-bit soundtrack mode, and they're also giving you a free code for Mighty Gunvolt on Steam. So they're really trying to make good on this. The the thing that I'm worried is going to happen with this is they're going to release this demo version and people are going to play it and realize this game isn't that much fun. Yeah, people are going to play it and not particularly care for it. And it's going to doom the sales of the game. And that's and that's what remains to be seen. I think that I will try out. I'll try out this trial version. I'll report on it when we talk about uh, on the show. Yeah, totally. After it comes out, because I'm curious. Because I I've been skeptical about this game from the start. The first gameplay I saw did not impress me, and it continues to not really impress me. Yeah. So I kind of want to play it to see how it feels, and maybe that'll change my opinion. Yeah. But, uh, maybe not. Uh, speaking of things not coming out, Mortal Kombat X. Um, which was supposed to be getting a PS3 and 360 version, is not. Oh. Anymore. Well. They're not doing it. Um, so after, like, a bunch of delays and then months of silence, Warner Brothers officially canceled it. Um, they have come to through, they, and I quote, this is from an article from Destructoid yesterday as well, have come to the regrettable conclusion that we cannot release it for PS3 and 360. Our teams work diligently to meet the quality standards set by the current-gen versions of the game. We are not able to get these versions to the quality expected of a Mortal Kombat game, and are very sorry for not being able to deliver products as originally planned. So basically, the game was running on current-gen systems really well, and they couldn't get it to run good <laughs> on other systems. It don't run good. It don't run good. This, though, I think is indicative of we're hitting that point where there, there's not going to be, ver- like, old console versions of these games anymore. And I don't know why there has been for this long. They've really been hanging on. They've super stretching it. as, And I guess it's because it costs less to port them. Yeah. Uh, or it doesn't cost very much to port them, and the potential sales are, are still good. Significant. There's still plenty of people who don't have one of the new consoles. Yeah. Like, um, but I, we're, we're, I think we're finally going to see that phase out pretty soon. I mean, it's already been getting less and less as time goes on. So this this is just a, a perfect example of them flat out saying, we got to cancel. Is that a screen cap from the movie? I can't tell. I think it is, though. I think it is. The hair makes it look like it is. Yeah. Screenshot of Goro from the Mortal Kombat movie. You know the that? amazing Mortal Kombat movie. The am- yes. I'm actually not even sarcastic when I say that. That first Mortal Kombat movie's awesome. I also it's love... It's really fun. I also love the second one for how bad it is. The second one's a biz. Yeah, it's like really fun bad, the though. The special effect, it is. The special <laughs> effects are so bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, the CGI, like, Liu Kang dragon yeah. battle at the end is the worst looking thing. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness. At least Ermax in that movie. Totally. Ermax awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the redeeming features of it. Is that Ermax and the weird centaur guy, Motaro. Motaro! Get him in there. That was a jerk ass in all those games. I hated fighting him. Uh, meanwhile, guess what is coming out? Metal Gear Solid 5. The Phantom Pain. Phantom Pain. There's a launch trailer. Came out on the 25th. Man, that trailer. Gets you. Oh, it looks good. Have you watched this launch trailer? Not the whole thing yet. Oh my god. It goes through... It starts with Snake, like, crawling, and then he sits up, and he becomes PlayStation 1 Polygon Solid Snake. (laughs) And then it just goes through... It's playing this super somber music, and it goes through all the games, showing, like, key events from them. And it's... Oh man, it gets you. If you've played the whole series, it gets you right in the feels. (laughs) It's so good. And then it shows off some wacky robot stuff. I jostled our mic, our headphones again. Now we can't hear. Um, shows off some weird Metal Gear stuff at the end with the new Metal Gear that looks super awesome. Mm. I'm so excited for this game. Oh my god! I've been <laughs> replaying through the whole franchise, so I'm getting really, getting really hyped up. That's coming out soon. Check out that launch trailer. Yeah. If you like Metal Gear, oh, that'll do it for you. Um, so Twitch plays Dark Souls. This started um, a few weeks ago now. Uh, when I first reported on it, it had just started. And they had not yet made it 
past the first bonfire in the game. They were getting nowhere. Yeah. As of today, they have made it past the second boss. Oh. They killed the Asylum Demon. They killed the Taurus Demon. Um, and they made it into uh, the Undead Parish, I believe. Um, because I believe they said they fought the Black Knight at the top of the tower, which is the beginning of that area. So they're a little ways into the beginning of the game now. Um, which would normally be awesome. That's super cool. It's amazing that they did that. However, they only made it this far because a consensus was reached, and they essentially decided to cheat. <gasps> Shocking. For shame. For shame. How did they cheat, exactly? It's kind of interesting, actually. Um, they modded a pause feature into the game and have been using that um, because the Souls games are you can't pause. Oh, okay. Opening up your menu does not pause the game. There's no actual way to pause the game. Things are going to happen whether you want them to or not. So you better pay attention. Um, So a mod was used to add a pause feature to the game, which allows... um, and they set up a system that allow that so they can pause it at any given time and allow players to queue up actions in a more orderly manner and then execute those game those actions once the game catches up which has made it um possible to oh says they've actually killed the gargoyles too oh good for um, them good for them <laughs> um it's made it possible to defeat a few bosses however it is even more boring to watch than it was before, with nothing happening. Because now this means that for 95% of the time, the game is paused. Oh. Uh, so it's ba- it's painful. Um, like, I can't, I can't put up with watching it. I just pop in to check where they've gotten to, and I'm just like, ugh, no, no more. Um, so the Pokemon thing was cool. Obviously, um, this was a cool idea. But it seems they needed to make this more like Pokemon for it to be possible. They needed to set up a way that they can pause the game and have a democratic little vote on what they're going to do. Yeah, because get anything done. As as we pointed out when we first reported on this, like Twitch plays makes perfect sense for a turn based game because you can do that. But something that's fully real time and so like quick paced. Yeah, at times as Dark Souls, um, so that so much relies on like quick Twitch gameplay. Um, it makes sense. At the same time, this kind of kills my interest in it. They should have just let it die. They should have just let it die. Because this this cheapens it so much that they decided to just change the game. They're changing the... They're fundamentally changed how the game works. Yeah. In order to do this, which is... It's, it's lame. It's lame. It's not cool. I don't... It makes me not care. Does this mean we're not going to have weekly reports on Twitch? I think I'll still Souls? bring it up. I'll, I'll still mention it every so often. But I'm not going to do it enthusiastically. <laughs> I'll do it, but I won't like I it. I won't like it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so let's move on to this uh, this bigger... Yeah, we big-ish. got about we got about ten minutes to kill on this. Okay. Should be good. This is super interesting. Right. Um, so, uh, what were your cat? <laughs> she loves you. <laughs> oh. So, uh, in an article posted to... A Media Corporation. I believe that's the name of the website. Clover loves having her butt scratched. That's my um, cat. <laughs> Medium.com. Yes. Uh, this guy named... Sergei Galyunkin. Oh, gosh. So Russian. So Russian. <laughs> uh, who uh, works for, uh, or works at, uh, Steam Spy, which is sort of this site that, like... Crunches a bunch of numbers on it's who's like a, playing yeah, what. Yeah, it's Steam like a game. census survey Steam website. Yeah, sort of. Has he's put together uh, an article about a bunch of the data that he's collected on uh, Steam and what people are playing and demographics and stuff, and has drawn the conclusion that uh, uh, core gamers or hardcore gamers that audience does not exist. Mm-hmm. At least not in terms of PC. Maybe for console, because this doesn't really address Maybe. that. But, yeah. but um, because again, this is just Steam that we're basing these numbers yeah. off of. Uh, and it is super interesting and totally makes sense, the stuff that he's drawn. So uh, he talks about how a lot of companies that make games 
uh, or companies that make anything. I'm they sorry. want to target the the like hardcore gamer market, yeah, or something or the female gamer market. And he compares it sort of to how um, soda companies mm. uh, when they make soft drinks, they're like, okay, well, people love Coca Cola, so if we make a soft drink that's like Coca Cola, then people who love Coca Cola will probably buy that. Yeah. And that's basically true. Yeah. Uh, there's also this whole idea where it's like that kind of thing doesn't take a lot of money to develop or produce. Uh, yeah. So even if you're only taking a very small chunk of the market of people who love Coca-Cola, yeah. you're still making money and you're and fine. The perfect example that he gives for this kind of thing in the game world, I think, is Dota 2 and League of Legends. Mm -hmm. And every MMO besides World of Warcraft and World of Warcraft. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so so with the with the World World of Warcraft example, yes. comparing it to the soft drink thing, he said he's saying, okay, so World of Warcraft came out and a bunch of people who make video games said, oh, this created a market for MMOs. Yes. So we should make other MMORPGs to take a chunk out of that market. But as we know, because we've reported on it in the past and that we've didn't seen happen. it, didn't happen at all. Um, instead, nobody played those other games. Um, Everyone just stuck to World of Warcraft. Yeah, like... Because like, you like World of Warcraft already, why would you bother switching to another game that's essentially the same, but isn't World of Warcraft? Exactly. And that's what the numbers point to, is that yeah. people who uh, play these games just play these games. Yeah. They're not interested in people games that are like them. Dota 2 don't care about League of Legends or Infinite Crisis or any other MOBA game. People who play League of Legends don't care about Dota 2 or Infinite Crisis or any other MOBA game. They just don't. They don't. They just care about that game that they're playing. And this, and one of the things he makes, uh, he has this whole section of the article that's entitled Games Aren't Products. Yeah. Um, <laughs> games, especially big ones, aren't consumer products, I'm quoting here. Uh, I'd go as far as to say that each multiplayer game is a cultural self-reinforcing phenomenon. Now that's a big old hipster word. It is. <laughs> uh, relying on its uh, perceived popularity more than on its market share. It's a big um, old hipster word, but it, I get what he means. No, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. It's, it's the idea that um, you're not... that. Uh, how do I explain it? Like You don't actually have to be offering a superior product. It's, it's be part of it. It's because they it has this um, this sort of user base of people that are so into it. Yeah. You could release a version of Dota 2 under a different name that is objectively better than Dota 2, but if it's not Dota 3, people aren't gonna buy no it. one who plays Dota 2 is going to care. And maybe that's happened. Yeah. And, but nobody we just cares. don't know. Well, yeah, we don't know because yeah. it didn't sell. Yeah. Um, it's, oh my gosh, it's super interesting. So it's really calling out a lot of game developers to be like, you guys, if you keep trying to make games for these markets, you're just going to lose money. Yeah. Because it doesn't work that way. I uh, really liked this little part where they say that people who, both people who play Dota 2 and play Torchlight 2 a lot, um, they are, they're gamers who spend a lot of time playing the, those specific favorite games of theirs. Mm -hmm. However, Dota 2 players only play Dota 2. Yeah, they, they give charts like, on it. two players generally try, like, ten times more different games than Dota 2 players. And there's these bar graphs that are blatantly, like, super blatantly different, where Dota 2 owners average only owning 12 games. Whereas Torchlight 2 owners average owning 117. 117. Then they have Rocket League owners, which average 78, and Counter-Strike Global Offensive owners, which are average 40. Mm -hmm. So they have a little more range there. That's really crazy. Like, I saw these <laughs> charts and was like, oh man, neat. <laughs> um... And like he says, even like does 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 the Dota two audience exist? Fifty five million gamers that have tried it, and nine point five million gamers that have played in the last two weeks. Does it mean they're enjoying MOBA games? Yes. Does it mean they'll even look at your MOBA game? No, they're too busy. They're too busy playing and their the one MOBA, MOBA game, game they like. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's an interesting thing where he's talking about uh, the people who are trying to make casual games on Steam. Uh, yeah, this part. Yes. Uh, who are trying to make casual games on Steam and trying to sell them, and he may, he says, like, okay, so Steam has, like, 700 to 800 million users or something like Oof. that. It's, like, it's a ridiculous number. It's huge. Yes. Um, but the percentage of them 
that actually plays, um, a ton of games. plays a ton of games and would be interested in picking up your indie game if you were making it is like 1%. Yeah, he says 1% of Steam gamers own 33% of all copies of games on Steam. And 20% of us- gamers on Steam own 88% of the games. <laughs> so we're talking about 1.3 million PC gamers that could fall into your definition of core gamer that buys several games per year. Which is a lot of people. But this includes you... discounted games. Yes. <laughs> like Steam sale stuff. Yeah. I'm sure if you <laughs> took that out, that number would be like hilariously small. Oh, It'd probably absolutely. like 20,000 people. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, but yeah, considering that game developers look at, yes, I'm sorry, 700 to 800 million. And to be that's included, how many people. to be included in, uh, the, the 20% that own 88% of games, guess how many games you would have to own? Four. A whopping four. Or even the people if who play Dota 2 games, and only play Dota 2 have more than four games You are in the majority 20% of game owners. <laughs> That's unbelievable. So if you're so crazy. If, you, if you're in that majority 20%, it's because you own Dota 2, basically, is what I'm getting Yeah, pretty this. much. That's ridiculous. Um, he doesn't have, he did say he didn't own, doesn't own, or know about console game numbers. Yeah. As far as this goes. Um. And we know that shooters, which is definitely yeah. a huge market, and I'm putting that in air quotes, yeah. market, that, uh, that people make games for and make a lot of co- carbon copy games, a lot yeah. of popular shooters for, um, that may, the numbers may be different than Yeah. He, he brought up an interesting thing too, is they try and generalize the gamer markets into these things like female gamers. But does female gamer mean a 55-year-old woman playing Candy Crush Saga? Does it mean a college girl playing Call of Duty? Does it mean a little girl at home playing Barbie Horse Adventure? Barbie Horse Adventure? What what does that mean? Like, literally, the term female gamer encompasses all of those things. And that was something... Which makes it so vague. Yeah, it was was something we reported on after, oh my god, GDC, the Game Developers Conference... Um, because Ashley Birch and a woman whose name I'm totally blanking on, the woman who wrote uh, the 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 book that they based the Mean Girls movie off of, I can't remember uh, her name. They they did a conference uh, about how girl they surveyed um, school students and specifically were look, to look at what kind of games they played, right? And really were paying attention to the female demographic. Mm-hmm. And yeah, girls would play basically the same games that boys would. Yeah, there was pretty much the no same difference. kind of popular. Video games, yeah, most people would be including playing. shooters, yeah, and um, and MMOs. The one thing I'll say about this article, um, that I I do raise a qualm with mm-hmm. is that he says that there's no such thing as a hardcore gaming market, but then he goes on to say that there's one percent of gamers on Steam who own thirty three percent of the games. I feel like one could argue that that tiny, tiny, tiny chunk, one percent, is the hardcore quote-unquote game market. You could. I if think, we're thinking of hardcore gamers as in the people who buy a ton of games yeah. and play a ton of games. Uh, and I think that... yeah, I think the, an argument can be made. Yeah, and, and I think that then it's it's still one of those things where he's trying to point out, yeah. like, okay, so game developers, you think that it's this... Um, but it does this point, s- right, still yeah, stands. You think it's the 700 million, no, but it's really 1.3 1. 1. 3 million, million, maybe, but probably maybe. less than that. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a totally different perception of this than what the actual numbers are showing us, like for sure. Um, and which ho- is cool, yeah. And hopefully, this this kind of stuff, people like people like EA, yeah, and um, maybe not Nintendo because they're kind of their own thing. But, they do their own. Thing. Um, but Sony definitely um, will look at these things and uh, and learn from them. Yep. They'll try to actually. It also is a really strong argument for the the need to make original games. Yes, because even though, as we know, you've got a much smaller it, audience, yeah, it's showing you that this copycat style game development doesn't really work. Yeah, it doesn't sell. Surprise, surprise, shocker! Like nobody noticed that in the last ten years of World of Warcraft. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> you didn't play Tabula Rasa. You didn't, you didn't play that game. <laughs> I forgot that game existed. <laughs> I can't believe you just name dropped Tabula Rasa. Ugh. Get out of my life. Yes, get, get out. Get out. This show's over. <laughs> Don't copy that, Floppy. It's done. As soon as you mention Tabula Rasa, your podcast is freaking done. 
<laughs> You're out. Uh, what games are coming out? Um, I will, oh, I want to say, um, this past week, Until Dawn came out. The PS4 exclusive horror, like, interactive game. I have not read reviews, but what I have, I have seen are people that I know on Facebook talking about it, and everyone I know on Facebook have been like, who has bought it, which is admittedly not that many people, have yeah. been like, this game rules. My girlfriend and I, um, we watch um, the Best Friends Play videos on yep. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Love those guys. There's a plug for you, if you ever hear this. Um, <laughs> they won't. Um, they won't, but they're great. Uh, we watched the first two parts of a playthrough they're doing of it, and then immediately the, the, we watched the second part today, and immediately decided we don't want to watch the rest of this. We want to play this. Oh. So we went out and bought a copy Sweet. today, and tonight we're going to start playing it. It looks great. Nice. Like It looks really cool. And all these games that say, like, oh, your choices matter, your choices matter. This game says that, too. But it gives me the feeling, and my girlfriend read a review or two confirming this, that the choices in this game actually do make actually a difference. Matter. Like, they actually do affect your ending. Um, which is great. That's amazing. I love that. Because that, that's what I, everyone I feel like has wanted from a game like this, is for these choices to actually be worth a damn. Um, and just the way the game presents itself is excellent. Peter Stormare's in it. As a oh, yeah, I remember guy. hearing about that. Man, the facial capture on him. <laughs> oh my god. Great. Looks so good. Great. Um it's 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 really neat looking and I'm excited to start it up. Um so I'll I'll do an update on that next week once we've played some of it. Uh but the other thing I like from what I've seen is that the choices are not obvious and how they're going to affect things. Mm -hmm. You're given choices like do you want to do this quickly or do you want to do this safely? That's the choice you're given. <laughs> so, like, the implications of that are awesome. Because it's not just saying, like, do this or do that. It's keeping it kind of vague. So you're like, I don't know what the right thing to do is here. Maybe there is no right thing. And another thing that they've done is set up situations where there's an action you can take, but maybe taking that action isn't... Maybe you should just not do that. Which all these other games, they give you prompts and you do the prompts. In this game, prompts will come up and you can just not do them. And that will affect what happens. Oh. Or other prompts will show up after that that are maybe something better or maybe something worse. Oh. So they've played around with it enough that I think, I think they got something going on here. Um, so so what's coming out? There's a lot of stuff coming out in the first. Yes, um, Metal Gear Solid Five, the Phantom which Phantom. for some reason is not on this list. It's not on your list? No, it's not on my list. Oh, no, it is. It's I'm just stupid. <laughs> I was going to say, we're looking at the same list, but I see it. It's coming out. I'm buying that. I might not. I probably won't start it right away, because um, I want to finish my replay of all the other games and stuff. Uh, the Mad um, Max game is also coming out on the first. I'm really... I'm really... Cautiously optimistic? Cautiously optimistic. Yeah. About that game. yeah. I want to hear reviews. I want to see more gameplay of it, but I, I feel like I'm probably going to end up picking it up. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, Nobunaga's Ambition. Sphere of Influence. I'll, I'll get into any game called Nobunaga's <laughs> Ambition. Uh, something called Zeo Drifter. Sure. On the PS4 and Vita. Yeah, it's a pixel game. It's a little pixel adventure. This has yeah, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Fine. Or Milo. Redwall. Red, the game. Redwall. <laughs> Apparently. That's a thing. It's a role playing strategy board game. Um, Disney Infinity 3.0 comes out tomorrow. For everything. For everything. Um, I've heard Disney Infinity is actually pretty good. Like better. It's like it's like uh, uh, what are they called? Skylanders, but like better. Like it's more fun. Like the game is just like better put together. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what I hear basically. And you play as fun Disney characters like Captain Barbosa. Nice. From Pirates. That's cool. Yeah. You mind that? They're gonna have Star Wars guys in it now too. Actually. Oh, I heard about that. Which yeah. is really cool too. Um. Speaking of Star Wars, you see that little, you see that little teaser of somebody oh, else getting a lightsaber. Yes, I saw it. You see it. I saw a little bit of that. Pretty okay with We're that. gonna talk about that after the show. We're talking about the show because it's not video games. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, uh, with all that, we we've been don't copy that floppy. I have been your host Lex, and I have been Dan. Uh, we are a weekly video game news podcast broadcasting live on Fridays, seven p.m. to eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time on www.chipit.net. Uh, you can find us on all sorts of social media, such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Steam, and iTunes. You can find show archives on iTunes and on chipit.net. Um, definitely interact with, with us on there. We'd super appreciate it. Yeah, we post articles and stuff, and you can comment on them. You can even like them. You can even like them. If you, like you won't them. like any of them, though. You won't like any of them. <laughs> 
But in the meantime, remember... Don't copy that floppy. Or, don't copy that floppy. Or, don't copy that floppy.